Hi, I'm Scott from A2A, and I'm going to show you how to start the Comanche. With an aircraft engine, starting is difficult. It's nothing like a modern car where you press a button and the engine starts. This is 1940s technology. It's an aluminum carbureted engine. It's similar to an old Chevrolet big block high performance engine. And when I say high performance, I mean an engine that is designed to flow at the upper RPM range. And when you design an engine to breathe up high, you take away from its breathing down low. This is why a high performance car has a very lopy and usually high idle because it just won't run down low. It's not producing enough suction to pull in the fuel and the air through the carburetor. Most general aviation aircraft engines are designed to run between 1800 and 2700 RPM at all times. So they're hard to start because they're just not breathing well down low. To make matters worse, aircraft batteries are small. Because with aircraft, you're constantly trying to save weight. And furthermore, the Comanche has a 540 cubic inch engine. That's about 19% larger than a Chevrolet big block 454. So whereas on a car, you can crank and crank and crank until the engine starts. In aircraft, you have a small window to get that engine started. It does not take much to kill the battery. So let me demonstrate a standard Comanche engine start. And by standard, I mean an average day, which is 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 15 degrees Celsius. Now, the first thing we do is we remove this very high tech controls lock. Now let's move the tablet up here because we're pulling up our checklist. Flight info, checklists, engine start. Fuel selectors desired tank. It's left main. Mixture rich, throttle cracked, and prop full forward. And carb heat off. That's on. It's off. Master switch on. Now before I turn on the fuel pump, I want you to note this fuel pressure gauge over here because we're testing the fuel pump to make sure that it's working. We can hear it running, but it doesn't mean it's working until we can see fuel pressure. It's priming the lines. And there we go. Now, before I reach for that primer, I need to underscore that engine priming is the place that is going to usually decide whether you will be successful in starting an engine. If the engine does not have enough primer, it's going to be very hard to start. And the same goes if it has too much primer. So the question is, how much primer does this engine want? And that is largely decided by how long ago was the engine last run and how cold is this engine? Those two factors dramatically change how much primer is needed. And on top of that, even identical engine models in different airplanes often require differing amounts of primer. So usually it takes a bit of time to really get to know a specific airplane to know how much primer it needs. Now with my Comanche on a day like this where the airplane has just been sitting for a day or so, it wants five strokes of the primer. If it doesn't start right up, I probably would give it another two or three strokes of the primer. It's very hard to flood this Comanche, and if it does flood, it clears out pretty quickly. But that's this Comanche, and that is the AccuSim Comanche. Things change quite a bit in cold weather, and we'll get to that in a second. But for now, let's just do a standard engine start. And in this case, I'm gonna go five shots of the primer. One, two, three, four, and five. You scan the area, shout clear prop, and start the engine. Well, that was a nice start. Now, in real life, every engine start is unique. Let me show you three engine starts back to back. Same aircraft, same conditions.
honest out of all of them. But I hope you saw there is nothing scripted going on. In fact, those three engine starts were the next three engine starts that I took. I didn't have to retake these to show different engine starts. Okay, let's try this again, but only now in really cold weather. Now it's very cold outside. It's negative 10 degrees Celsius, that's 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I would never start an aircraft engine in 15 degrees Fahrenheit without an engine preheat. And we do have an electric engine heater. The thing to do is to put that engine heater on the night before you're gonna start it on a cold morning like this. It just runs an extension cord into the cowling. It takes about two hours to heat the oil. But you do have a choice. In an AccuSim, we simulate a cold engine start, and that's what I'm gonna do. The most significant thing about starting a very cold engine is how thick and like molasses the oil gets. So you're gonna to wanna to pay special attention to that oil pressure gauge, because with very thick oil, it can take quite a long time for that oil to reach all those important places inside the engine. So I'm gonna bring up the engine analyzer, just to show you what's happening to this engine when it's very cold and it's starting up. All right, I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on again just to prime the lines. And uh, the fuel pressure should come up really quickly because it was on not too long ago. There it goes. And that's because it takes probably about an hour or so for the fuel to completely drain back. It'll stay pressurized here for maybe about 30 seconds. All right, so we'll start priming. And since it is so cold, we're looking at maybe nine or 10 shots of primer. Five, six, seven, eight, and we'll stop at nine. And we'll shut the window here. Oh, actually we'll open the window because we have to yell clear prop and then we'll shut it. Uh, I just want you to listen to the engine. I want you to hear the engine instead of hearing the prop sound coming through the window. I want you to watch two things though. This oil pressure is gonna take a long time to come up. And in cold weather, it can be a little unnerving looking at that needle just sitting, not moving for the longest time. What we're gonna to do to alleviate that a bit is with our mags off, we're gonna crank the prop with a starter just to get some of the oil moving. But I want you to listen to this engine while watching the engine analyzer. I want you to experience this engine just warming up. It's so neat watching these parts come to life. So mags are off, we press the starter. We're not gonna crank it that much because the engine is cold and it will die if the engine doesn't start. Here we go, crack the throttle. Just coming up now. I am not gonna move the throttle. Watch this RPM. See? It's slowly coming up. As this engine begins to warm, it's just running a little better and a little better as it warms up. Oh, look how high that oil pressure is at a relatively low RPM. It's because the oil is just so thick pump is really working hard to move the oil. Now we do have a weak cylinder. If you listen carefully, you can hear it skipping. A good way to test your engine is bring it down to a really low idle. You can see the weak cylinders kind of struggling there. Yep, you see, that almost stalled. But this is what you go through when you fly an airplane. You pay attention to these little things because it's these little things that can become big things when you're flying in the air. All right, we started the Comanche in freezing cold. 
we have uh, flight info here. You can see we're actually freezing in the cockpit, so let's turn the heat on. And we're even modeling the air that the propeller is pushing through the cowling, getting heated, and going into that cabin. I hope that just sitting here in the tarmac in the cold in your Comanche is an experience that is as fun for you as it has been for us making it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and also enjoy growing with us in this wonderful world of aviation and flight simulation. Thank you.